But I do want to respond to a few of the statements which uh, my friend from Arizona made. First of all, in terms of hate crimes amendments, uh, the last year when we adopted this was not the first time that we adopted it on the defense authorization bill. We adopted and or at least considered and adopted in some cases hate crimes amendments in the FY 2001 defense authorization bill, the 2005 authorization bill, the 2008 authorization bill. I didn't hear my friend at that time make suggestions that somehow or other the committee uh, had lost its way in terms of bipartisanship. Uh, we have not lost our way. The Senate is a body which has a right to offer amendments which are not germane or relevant to the bill in front of us. This is not the first time that someone wants to offer those amendments. It will not be the last time. And for it to produce a charge that somehow or other the committee is therefore no longer a bipartisan committee, it seems to me is unfair, it's inappropriate, and I, I reject it. The Senate has considered amendments on the defense authorization bill itself in the last 20 years, not just on hate crimes, over and over and over again, long before I became chairman, by the way. We've debated amendments on the defense authorization bill on indecency standards, minimum wage, managed health plans, welfare reform, and death penalty for drug-related killings. That's just a few. I didn't hear anybody make the kind of charge at that time that somehow or other because the Senate rules were being utilized to, br to bring to the floor of the Senate an amendment which wasn't directly related to the bill in front of us that somehow or other the committee itself had engaged in some kind of a partisan effort. The rules of the Senate allow the majority leader to do what he did and majority leaders have done that in the past. The rules of the Senate allow senators other than majority leaders to offer amendments which are not relevant to the bill. And Republicans and Democrats have done that before on bill after bill after bill and on the defense bill after the defense bill after the defense bill. I think four times hate crimes has been offered and I believe adopted in this body on the defense bill. But it did not produce or unleash the kind of charge which we've just heard. Now, the majority leader has just a few minutes ago said that there's not going to be an effort to limit the consideration of just three amendments if cloture is invoked. In fact, he's hopeful, and so am I, that numbers of amendments, many amendments, can be considered before the recess. I'd like to finish the bill before the recess if we could. I'd like to get time agreements. As a matter of fact, before this last recess, I asked unanimous consent that we move to this bill. I didn't put conditions on it. I just said unanimous consent that we move to the bill and couldn't even get consent to do that. What's unheard of around here, as far as I know, is what's going on repeatedly now in the United States Senate, which are objections, filibusters, threats of filibusters, to move to a bill to debate. This threat of a filibuster isn't a filibuster on the bill, it's a threat to filibuster are debating a bill, offering amendments on the bill. That's what is happening here. And to deny the Senate the opportunity to legislate on a defense authorization bill is what is being proposed here. That we not even be allowed to move to the bill until certain conditions of certain senators are met. There's going to be a lot of time to debate this cloture amendment, and I'm going to save most of that debate for Monday. But I do think it is inaccurate to suggest that suddenly there's an effort made to offer a non-relevant amendment to a bill in the United States Senate. So many of our bills have been subjected to non-relevant amendments because the rules allow it. And as manager of this bill, we always try to figure out a way through that thicket. It's never easy. I've managed enough bills to know it's never easy to get through that thicket that the rules provide for, that non-relevant amendments are permitted. And to suggest, as the, my friend from Arizona has, that somehow or other, last year, for the first time, we adopted a non-relevant amendment when we adopted hate crimes is not accurate because we've adopted that very amendment on this very bill. 
two or three times before that. Which says, doesn't even get to the point of all these other amendments which have been adopted, not just on the defense authorization bill, but on other bills which do not relate to the bill on the floor. And I just gave a few examples. Many of them come from the Republican side. But to start suggesting that some, somehow or other what is happening here is unique or novel, it seems to me is not accurate and does not contribute to what I hope will be. And in this, I think I share the, the hope of the senator from Arizona that the security of this nation continue to be, as it always has been, and God willing always will be, a bipartisan matter handled in a bipartisan way by the Armed Services Committee. I yield the floor.